Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we are going to learn about continuous functions. The reason is that in the next video, we will learn existence and uniqueness theorem, which is a very big topic in our differential equation course. But to understand existence and uniqueness theorem, we need to know about continuous functions. So that's what we are going to do in this video. We are going to spend time on learning and reviewing about continuous functions. Now, loosely speaking, a function is said to be continuous when you draw the function, when you graph the function, if you don't see any holes, gaps, breakpoints, vertical asymptote, jumps, if you don't see them, then your function is continuous. Now, that's not a very good way to explain a continuous function. That's not precise. So we have to learn a mathematically precise definition. Okay, so let's learn the definition first. Now, a function f, let's say there's a function of x, this function is said to be continuous at a given point a. So, you need the function and also a point to talk about continuity, okay? So, the function fx is said to be continuous at point a if, okay, if the limit of the function when x goes to a is equal to the function value at a so if this happens then your function is continuous now some of you might think that well this is a little bit complicated and um, some of you might prefer that loosely explained definition of the continuous functions now but wait we will we will try to break down this okay so i can break it break this down into three things that you must check okay so here are the three things first thing is that your function okay should be defined so the function should be defined at the point that you're talking about okay so fx let's say is fx is defined at the point a the second thing is that the limit of the function when x goes to a, limit of the function should exist. Now, what do, I, what do I mean by the limit exist? Now, this goes back to calculus. So, the limit exists if, okay, the limit of the function f when x goes to a exists if the left hand limit and the right hand limit is equal, right? So, when x approaches to a from the left, okay, if the limit of the function when x approaches to a from the left is equal to the limit when x approaches to a from the right, if these two are equal, then the limit exists. Okay, so that's the second condition. The third condition is that the limit of the function f when x goes to a, if that's the function evaluated at a, the value of the function evaluated at a, if there's a, if those two things are same, then you get continuity. So these are the three things that you need to check if you want to know whether your function is continuous at a given point or not. Now I know still this might be a little bit confusing. So let's take some examples and try to understand these three things. Okay, so let's let's look at the first condition. The function should be defined at a, the given point A. Now I'm going to, for each condition, I'm going to give you a good example and a bad example. That means an example of a continuous function and an example of a discontinuous function. Now to understand the first condition, let's start from a bad example, which I labeled less discontinuous so let me say d okay so an example of a function which is discontinuous because the first condition is violated the example is the function 1 over x and the point is 0 think about this so the function 1 over x is not defined for x value 0 because when x is equal to 0 you are dividing by 0 that's not allowed in mathematics so 1 over x is 1 over x does not exist for 0 when, when x is equal to 0 so this function 1 over x is discontinuous when x is equal to 0 so that's a discontinuous example of a discontinuous function now how about a, a, an example of a continuous function think about the function x square again at the point 0 so is the function x square continuous at the point 0 or exist at 0 or defined at 0. Yes, when x is equal to 0, x square is 0. 
0 x square is defined for x is equal to 0, right? There's no problem of the function x square at 0, right? So that's x square is defined or exist when x is equal to 0. So the first condition is satisfied in the first example, but in this in, in, the, in the example that I just gave, but in this example, the first condition is violated, okay? Right, so let's look at the second condition, which is, which is one of the trickiest condition. Now I'm going to give an example for the second condition. Maybe let's write here. So the idea is that the limit should exist. Now let's start from the same example. How about the function x square at the point 0? Okay, when x is equal to 0. How about this? So what is the limit of the function x square when x goes to 0? Does that exist? Yes, it exists, right? What's the limit? Limit is going to be zero. Now, why is that? Because the left limit and the right limit is same. Now, limit when x approaches to zero from left, okay? What happens to x square? That means x up to approaches to zero from the left means you are thinking about the values, x values that are less than zero but close to zero. Like negative point one, negative point zero zero one, negative point even closer to zero but less than zero. So when x get close to zero from the left, still x square get closer to zero, right? And how about when x get closer to zero from the right? That means that means the x values that are larger than 0 but extremely close to 0 like 0 0.1, 0 0.001, 0 0.0001. So when you use such x values still the x square is going to get closer to 0. So actually the limit exists because the left limit and the right limit is same. So that this example satisfy the second condition as well. Now how about an example a bad example, a, 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 a function that violate this condition. So I can give this fancy function. So let's say the function fx is a piecewise function where when x is less than 2, the function behaves like x. When x is greater than or equal to 2, the function behaves like x squared. Let's try to graph this function, okay? So if I quickly graph this function, when x is less than 2, the function acts like y is equal to x right but when n, when x is equal to 2 the function value is not 2 okay right because this is for strictly x value strictly less than 2 but when x is greater than no equal to 2 the function behaves like x square so when x is equal to 2 2 square is 4 so that's where you start right so this is where you start when x is equal to 2 the function value is 4 and the rest of the function will behave like x square so this is the plot of the function graph of the function right now look at the limit so from left side when x approaches to 2 from left side the function approaches to what it looks like it's approaching to 2 right so the limit when x approaches to 2 from left the function uh, seems to be like approaching to 2. But from right, what happens? When x approaches to 2 from the right hand side, if you're coming in the right direction, if you're uh, coming along this graph, then the function approaches to 4. See, the left limit and the right limit, not the same. So then the second condition violated. So this new function that I gave you is not continuous, okay, at x is equal to 2. All right, the third condition. The third condition is that, well, if the limit exists, the limit better be the function value evaluated at that point, okay? Now, for example, um, let's look at two examples. So a good example, a continuous example. Think about the function x square, okay, at zero. So what is the limit? When x goes to 0, what is the limit of x square? The limit of x square when x goes to 0 is 0, right? And that's exactly the function value at 0 because 0 square is also 0. So this is an example of a function, okay? This particular function x square at point 0 satisfied all three conditions. It, it is defined at 0, the limit exists when x goes to 0, and the limit when x goes to 0 is same as the function value at 0. So all three satisfied that's a continuous function. Nice. Now how about an example function where the third condition doesn't satisfy but the second condition satisfy. 
let's see. So my example is going to be, let's write this fancy function fx where, um, let's see, the function is x when x less than 1, 2 when x is equal to 1, and x square when x greater than 1. So let's talk about the talk about whether this function is continuous at the point 1 or not. So if I graph this function, 1 is a special point. So for x value strictly less than 1, the function behaves like y is equal to x. And when x is equal to 1, the function value is what? 2. So the function value is 2. Okay. Now when x greater than strict, when x is great, oops, when x is strictly greater than 1, the function behaves like x square. So uh, function behaves like x square, then it starts from here, it behaves like this. So this is how you plot the function. Now think about this. Now what is the left limit? So when x approaches to 1 from the left hand side, the limit is seems to be like 1, right? Now what's the right limit? So when x approaches to 1 from the right hand side, again it's coming from this direction, the limit seems to be like 1. So the limit exists. When x approaches to 1, the limit of this function is actually 1. But is it the function value at x is equal to 1? No, the function value at x is equal to 1 is 2. So f1 when x is equal to 1 function value is 2. They are not the same right so because of that this function is not continuous okay right so these so those are few examples um, specifically representing these three conditions now i know this is a lot to take in okay probably a lot of review of calculus one right but you know what the good news is that we don't need really we don't need all three conditions in our differential equation course for existence and uniqueness theorem okay we have simple examples in our course so that we only need to worry about the first condition that's the good news but anyway i wanted to talk about the continuity in general because if i'm talking about the continuity of a function i have to give these three conditions okay right so in reality in our course we only worry about about the first condition okay so the first condition is the function should be defined defined at the given point if you want the continuity at that point now let me give you three examples so the function 1 over x minus 3 and the function natural log x okay that's a bad way to write natural log x so natural log x and the next function is square root x so let's look at these three functions now here's the thing in our course we need to know we should be able to check whether the function is continuous or not and also in addition to that we should be able to say these are the region or we should be able to pinpoint the regions where the function is continuous so what do i mean let's look at this first example tell me what is the bad point where is this function not defined this function is not defined when x is equal to 3 so x should not be 3 right okay but other than three for every other real number this function is continuous so what is the what are the intervals that this function continues i can say from negative infinity to three this function is continuous now when i use open brackets here that means three is not included it's excluded okay so for any x value going from negative infinity to three for any x value yeah for any x value going from negative infinity to 3, this function is defined. It's just 3 is the bad guy, right? Okay. How about from 3 to infinity? Still, this function is behaving fine and continuous for any x value from 3 to infinity. It's just 3 is a bad point. So that's how you would use the continuity in our course. You look at the function and come up with intervals where the function is continuous. Basically, look at the function, detect the bad points, okay, and then remove them, remove those bad points and construct intervals. Let's just look at another two examples. Natural log x. Now natural log x is not defined for x is equal to 0. So x cannot be 0. And the other thing is 
you cannot take the natural log of a negative number so x has to be strictly greater than 0 cannot be 0 and has to be greater than 0 okay so that means the interval that works for natural log x is 0 to infinity any x value that's going from 0 to infinity 0 not included this function is continuous okay so not only we detected the bad regions we removed them and constructed an interval where the function is continuous okay right third but the final one square root x now you cannot take the square root of a negative number right so x has to be greater than 0 how about 0 can you take the square root of 0 well totally fine you can take the square root of 0 square root of 0 is 0 so x ha x has to be strictly greater than 0 or i can say in interval notation 0 to infinity but now at 0 i have these closed brackets now closed brackets means 0 is included okay right because 0 at 0 function square root x is continuous all right so we discuss about a lot of things in this video in nutshell what do you need to move on in this course when a function is given first look at the function and detect all the bad points that means the points where the function is not defined take those points and remove those points and come up with intervals where the function behaves nicely or the function is continuous so that's the summary of this video um okay so i will catch you with the existence and uniqueness theorem from next video